Okay, so we talked about metals, non-metal, that kind of thing. So today we are going to talk about extraction of metals. Basically, the idea is how do we get metals from their ores? All right, so we get metals from their ores. Ores are the natural rocks or natural compounds or a mixture in which we get the ore. Most of the time, these ores have uh, metal combined with uh, oxides or metal combined with uh, many other substances. And the ore is basically something that we have to purify. Now, does anybody know how we can purify an ore? So with the blast furnace? Uh, blast furnace doesn't really purify it. Uh, with the oxygen furnace? Oxygen furnace does purify. That is one option. Yes, oxygen furnace can purify. But think of simpler ways. Purification techniques is a whole chapter, right? So filtration, crystallization, those kind of things help us purify an ore. But most of the time, these ores, because they have metals combined with other chemicals, we have to use chemical methods to purify them. So we don't really need to go into the purification of ores. We just assume that whatever metal we are getting, we have purified it. So that's the first thing. So there's uh, four main metals for which you need to know how we get them. So for copper, we have copper oxide. We have to purify copper oxide to get copper. For iron, we have iron oxide, which is iron three oxide. And this one is present in hematite. So hematite is the main ore from which we get iron oxide. Of course, there's other uh, ores as well. For example, iron has magnetite as well or others, but we just focus on hematite. Similarly, for aluminum, we have bauxite. And we assume that from bauxite, we have already purified it and we got aluminum oxide. Of course, bauxite has many other things, but we extract aluminum oxide and we are going to work with that. And lastly, for zinc, we have zinc sulfide. And that again is coming from an ore, which is uh, called zinc blend. And we are going to assume that we have purified it and we have gotten this thing out. Clear? So four metals in our syllabus and they are basically taken out from these substances which are present in their ores. All right, so our focus will be on extracting the metal, copper, iron, aluminum, zinc from these ores. Okay. All right. So how do we do it? Do you see a pattern in this? There, is there some order in which you can put them? So for example, if I say that I'm going to put them in this order, aluminum, then zinc, then iron oxide, then copper oxide. Do you see a pattern here? Is there any trend? They're all like in descending order of reactivity. Very good. They are exactly in the order of their reactivity in descending order of reactivity. Aluminum is the most reactive and copper is the least reactive in all four of these. So very good, very good. So the idea again is that we have them in order of reactivity and we can use the reactivity to basically separate them from whatever other substance they have. Now, there is one atom or one element that can help us here. In the reactivity series, carbon is over here. What does that tell you about it? About working with these metals? We can displace them using carbon, like metals below aluminum. Excellent. Excellent. So metals that are below aluminum, zinc, iron, copper, we can displace them. We can use displacement reaction using carbon. And that way we can get the metal out. So if I put copper oxide with carbon, technically carbon should displace it and I should get copper plus carbon dioxide. Of course, I'll balance it. But do you remember the reactivity series and the displacement principle that we talked about? So that can apply here, right? So we can get pure copper out of this using this. But there's another method. 
we can also do the same thing with zinc and we can get CH2 plus zinc, right? So this idea that we can get metal out of this using carbon is called reduction with carbon because you are reducing the metal. If you look at the charges, metal is positive two, oxide is negative two, this is zero. But now this is zero and this is negative two and this is plus four. So do you see that copper went from plus two to zero? What that tells us that it has reduced. So carbon is an excellent reducing agent because it can displace all of these, reduce all of these. But there's another one, hydrogen, which is over here, which means something else. What does hydrogen being over there tell you about these metals? Hmm? That zinc and iron are more reactive than uh, hydrogen. Sure. But in terms of extracting metals, what does it tell us? That hydrogen is not a good reducing agent compared to it carbon. It is a good reducing agent, but not for iron. It's a good reducing agent for other things like copper. We can get it from copper oxide. We can reduce copper from copper oxide and using hydrogen. We can do that. Yeah. So again, it comes down to what are you going to work with? So that means for copper, the ideal case would be simply take hydrogen and copper oxide. And that is how we get extraction of copper done. So extraction 